Let's welcome our guests in the studio. Um, we are going to have a conversation with Rehab Wanjoi Kiranga. Wamboi Kiranga is the president of the Kembu County Disability Network. And we'll also be joined by Damaris Njoki, who is from uh, Nakuru County. Good morning. Morning to you. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante. This is the Situation Room. Um, we want to talk about, you know, disability and inclusion of women living with disability in Kenya's leadership. All right. So first, let's start with an introduction. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Damaris Karuri from Nakuru County, mm -hmm. Nakuru Town West constituency mm -hmm. from Roda Ward. Okay. Yes. And which organization do you represent? Okay, I represent PWD at large because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm the chairperson mm. of several groups that are with people with disability. Yeah. One, I'm the chairperson of smart people with disability, and also I'm the chairperson of physically challenged women. I'm the assistant chairperson mm. of Nakuru Town West persons living with a disability mm -hmm. yes when you talk about persons living with disability of course we know that there are several provisions in the constitution and pieces of legislation when it comes to including persons with disability in positions of leadership now we have seen complaints especially in the last couple of uh, weeks with regards to the composition of the county assemblies um, the expectation is that we are going to have the marginalized, this is persons living with disability, the youth being included in slots, affirmative action slots in the county assemblies, as well as the National Assembly and the Senate. Many of the complaints that we we're seeing were people saying, I was in my party's nomination list to join the county assembly or to join the National Assembly or the Senate, mostly for county assemblies. And the people with disability would say that they were then uh, overlooked when it came to the gazettement of the nominees. Did you deal with those from your members? People complaining that I was supposed to have been nominated to a county assembly and now I find myself is not on the list of those that have been gazetted. Okay, it's very unfortunate because uh, as, as, as we are talking now, mm. in the whole county, 22 counties have not been represented. But when I, um, I talk in, uh, for the case of Nakuru, mm. at least one person was nominated who is a lady, but others were in the list, they were in the party list, but they were not nominated. They were overlooked. And it has been like that throughout. Like even in 2017, the same happened. This year has also happened the same. Okay, I myself, I didn't apply for the nomination because I was vying as an, a, an MCA but I was an independent candidate, mm -hmm. so I did not apply. But for those, I know those who applied, but they were not nominated. Why? Uh, mostly, the parties, parties are owned by, okay, I, I'm sorry to say this, but it's like parties are owned by individuals. Mm. And they are the ones who decide. As much as the constitution stipulates that we should have a, a male and a female person with a disability mm. in the county assembly. Sometimes it doesn't happen. We are overlooked. And those seats, I believe they are given to the cronies or to the friends of the political parties. And sometimes even money exchange hands mm. for you to get that nomination. It's very unfortunate. Mm. Yeah. If we were to even actually push it further, there is persons with disability and then there is women living with disability. Do you think women living with disability are discriminated against further, even when it comes to the issue of affirmative action for people with disabilities? Yeah, I think they are discriminated because we find most of the time they are never given the, the chance. As much as you qualify, mm. you find that that's, that, that seat is given to somebody else who is not even known. And they are the ones who get those seats. Yeah. Let me understand you. Do I understand you to be saying that when you talk about the affirmative action that actually was intended in our constitution to ensure that people with disability are represented adequately, women with disability are also represented adequately, that 
The nominations or this affirmative action ought to consider people who are A, living with disability, but are also known to champion the causes of other people who are living with the same disability. And do I understand to be saying that oftentimes when you see the appointments, there are people who are not known in that space. They are not known to champion the causes of people who live with disabilities. And so one even wonders, how did this person get themselves to be appointed? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm, exactly that's what I'm saying. Mm. Like in Akuru County, mm. when I speak of 2017, mm. we applied for those positions. We didn't get them. In fact, 2017, we didn't have a representative. So who got, I'm sorry. So if, if is, are these positions already mapped or marked for people living with disabilities? Are they already separated and said, this is a slot, this is the quota, people with living with disabilities ought to have these positions? Is this, is this the, the situation? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Okay. A man and a female, they must have those slots mm -hmm. in the county assembly. Okay. Now, at least one. At least yeah, one. At least one. Mm. So if that has already been earmarked and you're saying that there was no representation, then who got the slots? Those slots, they were given to the cronies of the parties. They were given to different people. But at least this year, we are very happy mm -hmm. that we have one. We have a lady from Kuresoi, either south or west, mm -hmm. by her name, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. She was the one who was nominated. Mm -hmm. And she has a partial disability. At least we are happy this time round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you saying that in, in, the, in the past, like this 2017 period we are referring to, that some of the nominations who took the slot were not people living with disabilities? No. We were never represented. Okay. In, in Nakuru County Assembly, we didn't have a representative. Okay, those slots that were supposed to be given to PWDs, mm. they were not, we were never uh, nominated. So there was no representation, but we had somebody who had a, a who who vied for the position, a man from mm. Mauche. Mm. He was in the county assembly, but for the nomination seats. Meaning he vied and he won. Yes. Mm. But for the nomination, the not, slot, yeah, no. we were not given the slots. Okay. What mm. do you understand to be the reason as to why this didn't happen? Beyond what you talk about cronyism and other people getting the seats. So if you take the case forward, for example, to whomever, at whatever level, party level, county, and say, look, this representation, from what we understand, is supposed to have been, you know, or this nomination, at least one on each side, man and woman, was supposed to be given to a person living with disabilities. And that did not happen. I guess the question is, now, what recourse? Who then hears? Who then does something about it? Or even acknowledgement of that issue? Okay, we have t really tried, mm. but uh, you know, the parties, they are the ones who, gi who give the party list mm -hmm. to the IEBC. Mm -hmm. So if your name was there and it was removed for the reasons known to the party, mm -hmm. you can't question the party mm -hmm. because the political parties, they are the ones who it's give the It's a prerogative list. to nominate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if your name is removed, you're just left there, you have nobody to question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the question is, um, here we are saying, what benefit, so that we can, just getting down to the nitty gritty, why is it important to have persons living with disability represented at this level? Okay, our issues, if you are a person with a disability, you will be in a position to represent our issues, mm. you see. Mm -hmm. If you are just there, you don't know what we go through. So mm -hmm. there's no way mm -hmm. you'll be able to represent us. And the constitution has given that, or that has given us the right to be represented mm -hmm. so that our issues mm -hmm. can be articulated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You know, it makes perfect sense if you think mm -hmm. about it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Look at even how we elect our leaders. Leaders represent an area they come from, not an area that uh, they have heard of. If I come from uh, Muruni constituents, which is where I come from, mm. I can't suddenly go to Mandera East and I can try, but uh, really, oh, how on earth will I even be considered to be representing the people of that particular part of the, the country? Mm. I don't live there. I don't know what their problems are. So what exactly will I be doing in my representation? You know, 
Yes. The wearer of the shoe is one who knows where it pinches. Yes. And it was clearly understood, even by the drafters of the constitution. And uh, when we say, let's make sure that we include all sectors and segments of our society mm. in positions of leadership, this is exactly what you're talking about. Mm. When you say, let's nominate, let's have affirmative action seats. Affirmative action seats say that you shall have a person with a disability, you shall look at minority, you shall look at uh, youth, you shall look at then at women and make sure that they are included in positions of leadership. I want to ask you, uh, Damaris, you say 2022 is better than 2027, uh, 2017. Yeah. Is it as a result of work that you did or is it because the parties this time decided to behave a bit better than they behaved last time? Is it their own benevolence or is it a push from uh, people, campaigners such as yourself? I believe it's through the push or maybe the party decided this time they want to give us a nomination, although they have not done it fully mm. because they have only nominated a lady. And the constitution stipulates very clearly it should be a male and a female. Mm. So they have only nominated a, the female. a female. So we feel we have been denied that chance because you're supposed to be rep represented by mm. two persons mm. exactly as the campaigners of uh, rights for persons living with disability what kind of engagement did you do did you have with the political parties ahead of the election to make sure that first of all one you sensitize people living with disability in, in uh, nakuru county to be aware of these slots to be aware of the need for them to present themselves before political parties and to be aware that you need to push for the realization of this in the party list. Did you play any role? Did you actively engage with your members and with the political parties? Yeah, I did. Because through our, our, our groups, we normally sensitize them. We encourage them to apply. And that's the reason, me as a person, I decided to vie. Mm. Because we have been waiting for these nominations and they are not coming forth. Mm -hmm. So I decided it's the right time I, I vie and seek for the elective position. But unfortunately, I didn't get it. But for we have been campaigning all through. We have been encouraging our people to apply, not to fear and to come out. Yes. What are some things that are currently the issues or challenges um, across board, whether we're looking at ward level, county level, I mean, around the country? We, I mean, we've heard some... Uh, we've heard what some of those challenges are. People living with disabilities in Kenya today, when we talk about representation of those issues, what exactly are we talking about? What are the issues? Okay, some of the issues is employment. Mm -hmm. Mostly, if you go to every sector, we find that there are no, uh, there are no people with a disability there. Mm -hmm. So some of them are unemployed. Maybe due to lack of education, their level most of them have not gone f too far and even those who have ed who have who are learned mm -hmm. and they're educated you find them they don't get those chances and i believe it's supposed to be at least in every sector we should get at least five percent mm. and especially even in the county governments it should be five percent but we don't get those chances so unemployment is a real challenge mm -hmm. also mm. We have to, okay, like the buildings, those are some of the challenges. You yeah. find that there are no ramps, mm -hmm. and if they are, they are not constructed in the right way. Mm -hmm. So somebody with a wheelchair will not even be able to pass through those Not ramps. Buildings. Mm -hmm. Also, there are different types of disabilities. You'll find that when you go even to a hospital, somebody which are, who is a, a, who has the hearing, hearing imp impairment, mm. They are no inter the interpreters. Somebody goes there and they are just talk, doing their Sign signing, signing to a doctor who doesn't nobody understand. But there is nobody who is to who is there to interpret to interpret for them. Mm -hmm. So those are the major challenges. At least we go through, and that's why we need to be represented so that our issues can be articulated and they they can be adhered to. At the national level, the National Council for Persons with uh, Disabilities. Does it engage with the national and county governments on such issues? So then those issues are sensitized to the government to know when you are making laws, you've got to 
look at laws that are specific to persons living with various forms of disability. Like you're saying, if it's about access to buildings, you have to make sure that these buildings are disability friendly. If it's about service provision, at least at the very minimum, every government office should have a disability friendly uh, access. So there will be people who offer uh, translation services, there'll be rams for persons who are on wheelchairs and such others. Uh, what, what role at national level is played by the council? Okay, the National Council has been very impactive and they have been playing those roles. But what I believe is the implementers, when it comes to those who are supposed to, be, to implement, I think they just overlook and they assume. Hmm. Because those, the, it's well stipulated mm. and even in the, the National Council for Persons with Disability, they have been playing that role of advocating. But it seems those, they, 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 they fall on deaf ears. They are not ready to implement. Yeah. How can they be made to implement? What mm. do you think? What do you think the solution? Where is the solution, Damaris? I mean, so we are where where we are. Okay. You come and talk to people like us. We are like, yes. Mm, it's clear. It's clear. You talk to anybody, it's clear. In fact, I'm sure even if you went to address members of parliament when they're having their induction, they're already, oh, yes, yes, we hear you. We understand you. But then they don't do it. They just hear, they don't implement. So me, I would say this. Mm. Every sector should be represented with a person with a disability. Because if when you are, if you are in a difference, if in, you, in every sector, mm -hmm. when you are there, you will at least you will force those things to be done. Like if we had been getting our 5%, at least all sectors mm. should have a person with a disability such that any time you are making the decisions, any time you are making any decision on the table, all our issues should be articulated. But because we are overlooked, nobody is there to air our views. Mm -hmm. We find that, okay, they just listen, but when it comes to the decision-making table, we are not there. So who will think on our line? Nobody. That is the big problem. So me, I believe... We should have, it should be implemented that in every sector, we get our 5% such that every, every place that we go, mm. when it comes to the service providers, we are there. When it comes to the national, national issues, we are there. Mm. Somebody who, is, who can represent our issues and articulate them well, mm. we should be there in every sector. When it comes to the county government, those positions so that we can handle, we should be there. Mm. So that every decision that, has, that is made, we are had and we are also represented. Mm. Your input is taken directly. Yes. You know, there are people who, uh, when they hear affirmative action, they think it's tokenism. And you've heard this many times. Mm. Okay, so these people just want to they be nominated. Why can't they okay. work hard for it? I mean... Uh, if Damaris could vie for a seat, why can't all persons with disability all vie for a seat? Why, why, do they all, why should we be giving them nominations? Respond to them. Okay, me, I would say this. Okay, for, okay, uh, the persons with disability should not wait to be nominated. They mm. should come out. They should be strong. They should have confidence. We can go and vie. We can go and campaign. But the conditions... Sometimes they are very difficult. Mm. So I believe the institutions like the IEBC, they should give us a level ground. They should allow us extra time for campaigning mm -hmm. because like me, it was a challenge. You go to the ground to campaign, but due to mobility, you will only reach very few people. Yeah. So women should not fear because they have disabilities. Yeah. They should go out. They should have confidence. Good point. Let's talk about that after the break as well. Mm. It's half past eight. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. It's the Situation Room. Damaris Njoki is our guest this morning. Damaris is a campaigner for persons living with disability. And we are talking about women with disability in leadership positions in Kenya, whether they feel well included, whether they feel um, regarded when it comes to positions of leadership. That's what we're discussing. 
Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. As we take the break, we remind you today is the 30th. Uh, yesterday was Thursday the 29th. And what happened yesterday? There was another episode of County 49 that dropped on Showmax, uh, giving you further intrigues into the story that's fast unfolding about the people of the fictional county of Boatele and how they deal with their leaders on a daily basis. Representation is a big thing um, here, and they're not leaving, or rather, they're not letting their guard down in terms of how their governance will be delivered and how their leadership will be delivered. 760 shillings every month, you can have access to this and other great programming on Showmax. Our guest is Damaris Njoki, a champion for disability rights. Uh, we are talking about the position of women with disability in leadership in the country. Damaris participated in the last general election. You said you vied for what seat? MCA seat. W for which ward? Aroda ward. In, in Nakuru County. In, in Nakuru County. And you were giving us your experience. Just take us through that experience. So a number of things that happened, obviously. The IEBC waived the fees for persons with disability for nomination. True? There's a, well, there was a, a, a reduction. Yeah. In terms of the fee that you and your competitors who were able-bodied would pay. Yes. Uh, and then everything after that is our level playing field. When it comes to how much money you spend, shauriyako. When it comes to the amount of uh, campaigning that you do, shauriyako. When the date for campaigning ends, it ends. When the date for campaigning starts, it starts for all of you. Yes. And you're saying some of those things were disadvantageous to you. Yes. Take us through that experience. Your own campaign and what you went through and the experience that you had. Okay. I was an independent candidate and it was very hectic and the reason I decided to go independent it's because initially I was in UDA party sorry to say that mm -hmm. but it read, before the primaries uh, somebody gave me an information that there is a, a person who should be nominated for the party who belongs to the party and he should be nominated mm -hmm. and even if we tried that person must be there mm -hmm. so and me i didn't want to be in that scenario that i've arrived at the primaries then um you see your victory yes and mm -hmm. so i decided to go independent from the word go okay so i didn't you do not participate in the uda in the primaries prim party primaries okay of course i've been seeing how they behave you are cheated, you are your votes are stolen, so I decided to go independent. Mm -hmm. Now, my journey started there. Mm. So, there were requirements uh, for the IBC, which were very difficult to attain, but I managed. One, we had to collect the signatures. That was the most challenging thing that I went through. Mm -hmm. We were required to get 500 signatures, not only signatures, but the co but copies, copies of, ID. of IDs. Mm. It was very hard for us because already people, the, the voters were getting bribes. So to get that copy of ID, you had to cough 100 shillings. So it mm. was not easy. Mm -hmm. But we tried and finally I managed, I got them. Now you take them to the IBC in a file. So many documents, you carry them physical photocopies, yeah. not just signatures. You had to carry them to the IBC offices. You had to come to Nairobi to the anniversary towers to bring your, to get the registration. And I believe such things can be devolved. You had to do in Nairobi? Yeah, we had to bring some documents to Nairobi. And yet there's a county and constituency yes. IBC office. Mm. Okay. So I had to, oh, I had to travel to anniversary towers to bring the, they, they wanted a CD. Mm. for the what do you call it so the soft copy of all those documents yeah mm. you had to bring them there before you go to the county offices okay so it was very hectic so to and fro running taking those documents there were so many requirements but finally i managed then it ca it comes to the now campaigning now mm. we had we had we had a, a time frame and i remember when you, when i cleared the, with the ibc i received my certificate now it took a long time for us to be gazetted. And already the other people were campaigning. They had campaigned during the primaries and they were still campaigning. And by the time we, ha we, are, we were through with the IBC, already we had like a month. In fact, we were told even to remove the posters if, if 
we had fixed them before. Eh. You see? So we had to start removing them. Mm. We had used money to fix them and now we were given the directions remove that we had those to things remove because them it's not yet official because campaign. Because it's not season. official time. And but already the big people, the big, big billboards were all over. They were campaigning. So I find that the level of ground was not the same. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine I'm campaigning to the ground. I don't have the finances. I had to reach the, the people. The voters were bribed. Voters were hungry. They, were, they wanted something. Damaris, it the was really of, hard. For the benefit of people who do not know you and those who are not watching, describe the kind of physical disability that you uh, live with. Okay, my di my disability is physical. Mm -hmm. I work with crutches. Okay. Yeah. So even during campaigning, this is how you move from one place to another. Yes. Walking with crutches. Yes. Okay. Go That's on. what I was doing. Some places are not accessible. You go to sa to some rallies. When you attend the rallies of the political parties, you are never given a chance. And organizing a rally for yourself, it was expensive. So me, I decided to do door to door campaign mm. which was also very difficult because mm. I can't go alone I must have somebody I had to pay those people who were working with me but I thank God I managed and finally I was in the ballot mm. now mm. the challenge came when it during the the, f the last week so my opponents took advantage of the nominations they were telling the voters that Damaris should not be elected because they have their slots. Ah, she's going to be nominated. Yes, she's going to be nominated. So to change the mind of the voters, it was not easy. <laughs> you go training them. No, me, I'm, I'm, an I'm independent. Vying, I am I'm not an independent and I'm not be. No, but already the, their mind, they, in back at their mind, they knew Damaris will be nominated. Yeah. So even if she doesn't get the votes she will be, she will be. He, she will be in the national assembly and it was really tough but i went up to the ballot and finally i didn't get the enough votes but i got the votes mm. yes <laughs> City. Mm? you know the the thing that is often forgotten mm. when people refer to affirmative action affirmative action is relevant against a backdrop of discrimination. Mm -hmm. It is brought into being because it is understood that there are groups of people who for whatever reason have been discriminated against for a long time. Now the affirmative action is intended to try and write this, to give them an equal footing with other people who did not suffer that discrimination. So it isn't a favor that is being done. No, 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 no. It is a wrong that is being put right. Mm. Now, I know for a fact that the Public Service Commission, in 2009, what they did was the retirement age had been 55 for public servants. They pushed it to 65. Now, what mm. they did for people with disabilities, they pushed it to 65. I know this. I didn't even know this before it was actually written and I came across it in the written form. Mm. But I have a friend. He's actually my neighbor in my rural home. Mm. He's a person who's been living with disability and we went to school with him. So... He told me that his retirement age was different from other. That's when I first came across it. Mm. Yeah, it's now, like that. what I find strange with what Damaris is saying, well, strange in, 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 in the worst possible way is that you have a law and people are breaking it. Yeah. It's a clear law. Mm. There's no ifs and buts and there are no perhaps about it. It is clear. This is what must be done. And yet people go about not doing it. And for some reason, nothing has been done about it and they've gotten away with it so far. Now, before anything is done and before this affirmative action that has to deal with people with disabilities is actually realized, mm -hmm. action must be taken against the people who have blatantly disregarded the law of the country. People who blatantly disregarded the constitution. Because it, it, it's clear, that they, you know, they, it, it isn't a subject of debate, it is clear. As for the issues of electioneering, unfortunately, there's no cure for that one, Damaris. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the rule book of our politics states the following. Yeah. 
there are no rules. Yeah. <laughs> Rule number one. <laughs> there, are no rules. there are no rules. So people will lie, they will cheat, they will yeah. misrepresent, they will bribe. Every vice that you can think of on this planet will be applied when it comes to our politics. Unfortunately, that it, we try to cure it mm. with a certain chapter six in our constitution. Mm. And those who elected who went to parliament, the first order of business was to water it down completely so that you can't actually actualize it. You can't operationalize it in a way that it can be implemented and you can't enforce it. Not really. So people will keep getting away with it. Now, until we cure that one, if you want to go into elective politics, I am the last person who's going to advise you to apply the rules that I see other politicians are applying. I actually don't believe in those rules. But you have the task of trying to get the electorate to actually understand that it is in their interest yeah. to elect someone who doesn't go by those rules. They at least have clarity as to the sort of person that they have elected. But if you elect somebody who goes by the rules that I've mentioned, there are no rules, then you have nothing to expect really because you don't really know what you're going to expect. But uh, the courage, let me ask the question I want to ask. Do you think that you would advise people living with disabilities to present themselves to electoral positions to the electorate more often because you don't see many but do you feel they should that they should take the courage to actually present themselves as candidates for electoral positions in the country yes me i would say and in fact i would encourage them to present themselves they should come out because we are just like any other person mm -hmm. The difference is that we cannot do things like others or I cannot walk like another person mm -hmm. or that person who is not hearing. Yeah. But me, I believe the, the, the people with disability, they are just like it. We have the thoughts, we have the leadership in us. So un unless we come out hmm, clearly mm -hmm. and refuse to be intimidated, we can be in those elective positions for sure yeah what are the community what is the community perception and i think it is really important because at the end of the day it is the community then that is either voting or voting for you or voting for somebody else what is from because obviously you're a member of your community known in your community that obviously gave you the push to go for a position um in leadership now what is the community's feeling? What is the community's perception about people, specifically women with disabilities, running for elective office? What is, from what you've seen, from what you've heard, what do they really honestly feel about it? Okay, what, okay. After going through that process, mm. I learned that co the community do not believe in us. Mm. They feel we should be given positions and we should not work for them. Mm. But for me, I was doing the opposite. I wanted to, to, to show the community that I'm able mm -hmm. and I can, I can be on those, I can vie for the position mm. like any other person. Like any mm -hmm. other person. Because mm -hmm. I have the will, I have the mind, and I can do it. Mm. So the community should be, okay, there's this lack of civic education. If the community have been have the information mm. of the or they have been they have been trained mm. they have okay they have the information that is mm -hmm. they should know that pwds are people like any other person mm -hmm. and especially women they believe we should be given the the positions mm -hmm. it's interesting but that you say that damaris when you say that the community believes that people with disabilities should be given the positions they don't have to work for them is that from a point of they don't believe that you're able or is it from a point of they don't believe that you should go through the same challenges that everybody else should go through? Is it from a point of feeling, no, 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 we should not subject persons with disability through the rigors of a campaign? Or is it from a feeling of we should not be, give, be bothered with looking at these people because they will not be able to do the job anyway? Which, which is which? through the experience i have yeah. is that the community believe we should not go through that vigorous process because they were saying how will you manage how will you reach all the people mm -hmm. don't you think it's tiresome you see yes but i wanted to show them that i can make it no no 
So me, I would encourage people to come out mm. and try to show the community that we are able. We are not supposed to be to sit there and be given everything. We don't need the sympathy. That is the point. So it's not sympathy that you want. Yeah. But I don't think the people are actually talking about sympathy. The people are promoting affirmative action. Right. No, it's it sympathy. sounds to me like people are saying, you know what? Eh? Damar is the same ex experience that you've given us this morning. You know, you have a challenge of just moving door to door. You have you can't go alone. You've got to go with somebody. That that person is a cost. Uh, how long is it going to take you to move from house one to house number ten, as compared to an able-bodied person? All those things the person is looking and thinking. Instead of doing all that. Instead of just, doing all yeah. that, mm -hmm. how about it's not that I'm feeling that you are uh, incapable, or I'm feeling I'm just the person is basically feeling. You shouldn't be. This playing field is not level. It's not gonna. It, you're never going to get justice if we say that you should all run 10 kilometers and compete on time. We should say that Damaris starts at kilometer nine when the other people are starting at kilometer one. Sounds to me like the community is already embracing affirmative action, city. Mm -mm. Really? Huh? No. I there are some so. people who have gone through the same journey mm. and they have made it. True. They have gone through the elective position and they have made it. Mm -hmm. So me, I believe the community should be sensitized. They should not discriminate us. When you are looking for the votes, mm. it's your right. And you, okay, they should not sympathize with you. Like I could go to some places and they tell me, how will you manage? Mm. It's raining. You'll get tired, you know? So which is I, all true. Yeah, which is not true. By the way, I was going through those places. Hmm? Yeah. So I think the community should be sensitized mm. that PWDs, they are able, just support them, give them the votes because they can make good leaders. Yes. What is required is empathy. Empathy. Yeah. Not sympathy. Not sympathy. Exactly. No, because the argument that we are now forwarding with regards to people living with disabilities, the same argument that was forwarded many, many decades ago with regards to educating women. Women were not educated. It was not considered a priority. And for whatever retrogressive traditional values that people had then, that's how they saw it. Mm. Now, the same, same attitude was applied towards educating people with disabilities. See, when special schools were set up, for instance, in this country, it was with the understanding that these people, these citizens need to be educated, but we need to take care of these special circumstances that they have, which prevent them from having the same opportunities as others. That is the thinking. Mm -hmm. When you sympathize, all you do is you go, Oi, woo, mm -hmm. hey. yeah, that's, that's it. A yes, but it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Whereas you need to understand, and the only way you understand it is by letting those people explain to you what it is they go through, no, no, not you looking and deciding that this is what you're seeing. Exactly. Because you don't have what they have, so you can't really fully understand mm -hmm. what it is that they're going through. Now, Damaris is right. Communities tend to be held in the throes and the grips of traditional values that they've had for the longest time without re-examining and re-evaluating them mm -hmm. and to even consider the relevance that those values have in this present day and age. See, when someone tells you, but how will you reach? How will you? People forget. 21st century. I don't have to physically see you in order to see what you look like. Mm -hmm. COVID taught us that I don't have to walk to school for someone to be educated. Now, these changes, sometimes the community hasn't quite, they can see it, but they haven't embraced them or internalized them. But disability is something that, it's like disease. It's something that, and it's like the eventuality death. Traditionally, we've never really gotten around to having a balanced way of dealing with these things. Mm. So part of our understanding and, and, and getting to terms uh, realistically is what Damaris is referring to as sensitizing, getting people to understand. But the biggest sensitization is when people with disability present themselves. Isn't that it? Isn't yes. that it? That you won't, you probably will not be able to shed off no, you won't. those prejudices no. or shed off any of those biases until you actually see people have to see it. Somebody and I'm not even saying campaigning, isn't it? I'm not talking about campaigning. No. I'm saying actually being in that position and showing, hold on, I'm doing it just as well, if not better as the next guy. Yes. And until you get to that point, that is when people will uh 
probably shift some of their prejudices and biases. But then the thing is, mm. getting to that point where somebody is actually being in, in the, the room, position, being in the room yes. is what is posing the challenge. And I'm hearing what Demaris is saying and what you guys are saying. Let's start from the end. If we had more persons with disabilities in positions of leadership, in the county assembly, in the executive, as CEC members, as governor, deputy governor, in the national assembly, as president or deputy president, as cabinet minister, as PS. If we could see all those, then we work backwards. Mm -hmm. Now, the journey to get there is what you've just described, mm -hmm. Demaris. Yes. There are very many challenges. And you, before you took the break, you said, we wish IBC could now also look at that field and know this field is not level. When you talk about equity, we're not talking about, you know, everybody has been given the same five-inch uh, stool to stand on, to view across the, the, the ridge. You've got to understand the difference in height. I, I, I see that. I see the point of when we talk about you, you want to present yourself for uh, an elective position and you are campaigning, I think at some point you need to push back that affirmative action to the level of saying the same way you've done. 47 women, woman rep positions. Why not have ring fenced positions for persons with disabilities? Correct. Ring fenced, mm. absolutely. At county assembly and say, you, Damaris, and others with disability are this campaigning for, for a seat. Yes. Right? You want to there. be elected, yeah. but you're campaigning for a seat that is there. So we know that this county assembly of Nakuru is going to have five uh, persons with disability elected by the people not just nominated, mm. but elected. And you, you, when you go into campaign, people are looking at you and know, yes, you are here. I know somebody else was here. The other person was here and we're going to elect one of you. When you get to the county assembly, then you start changing. And over time, with the sunset close, of course, then you come and campaign with the rest of us. But I think we are starting from a point where... The disadvantage is actually enormous. Yes. It's very, very enormous. I mean, we talk about the two-third gender rule now and it's considered normal, but look at the passage of time that we've gone through to the point where people actually accept and understand. So it is not a shock thing when you find that you have a lady who is heading an institution. Mm -hmm. Yep. No. It, that journey is far more torturous for people who live with disabilities. True. So, Eric, the thing that you suggested, mm. that perhaps would be the way to go. So that just like we had that affirmative action with the women rep, it, they should one for they should be one for people with disabilities. So the affirmative action, even in the county assembly, if you look at the number of MCAs who were nominated in 2017 across the country, and then they decided to vie in 2022 and got elected, yeah. is higher. Yes, from county assembly, from senate, from the national assembly. So the acceptability factor is is actually increasing, but it needs to be fast forwarded. Mm. It needs to be given a little turbo charge. Because if you leave it to the normal process of life, uh, that thing will take it forever. It will take forever. Yes. Damaris, your final message as you talk to the country this morning in terms of the position of women living with disabilities in leadership and what we all should think about. What would your message be to people who are watching and listening? Uh, my message would be that every person should consider, especially women with disability, that they are capable leaders and they should be elected in those positions. And maybe for those seats that are supposed to be nominated, let them be, they, they, they let nobody break the law. Yeah. Let them do exactly what is supposed to be done. Uh, I can give an example in Akuru. There's this, uh, there's this, the, the gender top up mm. for women, mm -hmm. for example. Mm. Those people who are nominated, they are women. And no women with disability was given the chance. Mm. I believe it should has, have started from there. Yep. Yeah? Mm. We should be given the, the, the top up positions. At least they should have considered 5% mm -hmm. of the women with disability. At least should have three or four. But it was not done that way. So this is the issue of the political parties. Yeah. Yeah. They should be very considerate. Okay. The political sh uh, the political party act should should be changed. They should be accommodative. Let's have our slots, so Everywhere. that we should have so many women 
in the in the county assembly so that as we implement the law concerning the PWDs, even the PWDs Act, we should be there and shed light on them. Maybe mm. some of them it's out of ignorance and some of them just they just want to break the law, That's which true. is already there, which is in place. It's in place. Damaris, yes. thank you very much for joining us. Mm. Damaris Njoki is a champion for disability rights and she's been here with us talking about women with disability in leadership. Keep it here for more conversations coming up. It's a Health Friday conversation with a cardiologist. Good morning. It's 9 a.m.